That's what they were experiencing. And Jesus said, who touched my clothes? And the disciples are sort of laughing. Saying, well, everybody's touched your clothes. But you know what? Though everybody was touching him, somebody touched him in a different way. Yes. Somebody touched him believing in him. That's what he meant. He felt power go out. And this is, this is remarkable. Think about this. That power was in him, and it was free for anyone. They all could have had it, but only one got it. See, it's just like when I stood here with the dollar bill. Everybody could have had it. Now, I know you're being polite, and you didn't just rush up your course. It was just a dollar, so it's not really hard on getting out of your seat for it. This is the same way with Jesus. He had the power of God for everybody, but only one made the difference. Was it that God looked down from heaven and said, that woman right there, that's her lucky day. No, he wanted it for everybody. He sent Jesus to the whole world for everyone. Everyone could have had it. So he said, who touched my clothes? And this is, he's going to make this point. His disciples said to him, thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou, who touched me? He looked around about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. She told him, in other words, it was me, I'm the one. Look at his answer to her. He said to her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. It's very sweet. In an endearing way, he calls her daughter. In a very, this is a very uh, a loving thing he says here. But notice what he says. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Now we know from reading the story, listen to this, we know from reading the account that the power flowed out of him and made her whole. Why did he say, Thy faith hath made thee whole? Because that power was there for anybody, but it was her faith that made the difference. Her confidence in him. By faith she reached out and received what was offered by grace. Now, two important things about this. Paul says, by grace. By grace you're saved. Through faith. And he says, that not of yourselves is the gift of God. See, we should see it that way. That whatever it is that we need, God offers it. We don't have to talk him into it. We don't have to twist his arm. We don't have to push the right buttons like a machine and make it operate. He's all, he already, Jesus said he knows the things that we need before we ask. But in that same passage, he says, ask and you shall receive, Jesus said. Ask and you shall receive. You know, James says it this way, but ask in faith, uh, not wavering. That's the, that's the key thought. And I like to, since we're in the Gospel of Mark, let me conclude with something I read last week, but it bears repeating. Mark chapter 11, verse 24. If you want to know how this applies to you and me today, you see a person might hear that story I just read and say, well, okay, I can understand that. Jesus was walking around then, and if I could get to him and touch his clothes, I could believe I'd receive what I need. If he were here, you know, walking around on planet Earth today, then uh, I could go to him and get what I need. But you know what? <laughs> He's not here but it's actually better and more conducive to us receiving from Him because He has gone to sit at the right hand of God in heaven. But when He went, He said, If I go, I will send to you another comforter. He sent the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not limited to a place, a certain geographical place. His Spirit is present everywhere at all times. You know, in the book of Acts, it tells us about the coming of the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter 2. And when the Holy Spirit came, Peter got up to speak. And he said, This is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, saith God, I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh. Now some people read that and think, Well, that's talking about some future revival where God's going to do something. No, that, he's saying this is that right now. In Acts chapter 2. He poured out His Spirit on all flesh. That means everybody has access to His Spirit. That's what that means. His Spirit is everywhere. We don't have to go to Jerusalem. Or even to Tulsa. <laughs> Though I like to go to Tulsa. We don't have to go somewhere different. He's here right now. He's with us at all by His Holy Spirit. We don't have to go and touch His clothes. The only, see, there wasn't anything special about His clothes. It wasn't His clothes. It was the power of Jesus that was residing in those clothes. We don't have to touch His clothes. But the same principle is in force. He said, Thy faith hath made thee whole. He didn't say, My clothes made you whole. He said, Thy faith. And here is a good observation I'll make for you. If her faith made her whole, your faith can make you whole. Yes. Same thing's true for us. How does it work? Jesus tells us here, this is the clearest way I can say it. 
Mark eleven twenty four. He says, Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them. He tells us exactly what to believe. See, by grace you are saved through faith. When you pray, believe that you receive them. And we have his promise. You shall have them. He says, you shall have them. It's not me saying that. He said that. He said that. You shall have them. What our part in this, see, first of all, it's by grace. First of all, God's not holding out. You see, I like to think of it this way. If you could envision a big barrel with all of God's blessings, whatever they may be, it's not that he's holding them all for whoever can climb up there and be worthy enough. When Jesus came and went to the cross and took away our sins and everything that disqualified us, see what Paul says, he says it this way, He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him freely give us all things? What that means is the big barrel, if you can envision this, with all of his blessings, he turned it upside down and poured it all out and said, okay, it's free, anyone who wants it can have it. Well, what are we going to do? What Jesus says, when you pray, believe. Believe what? Believe that you receive. Why is that important? Because God is invisible, and the source of all of your blessings begins in the invisible realm. Of course, we need it in this physical realm, and He knows that. But see, Jesus says, when you pray, believe. You see, when I had that dollar bill was standing here, I was a physical man with a physical dollar, and Phil came up and physically received it. He didn't have to believe anything. I mean, he had to believe I was really offering it. But see, to receive it, He just reached out and took it with His physical hand. But you see, to receive from God who is invisible, a blessing that starts in that heavenly invisible realm, you've got to believe that you receive. You don't reach out with your physical hand and take it. He says, when you pray, believe, you receive. Well, how do you do that? Well, I, I would say it's just as easy as, as saying, I thank you, I believe I receive it. Well, now what do we do after that? Well, keep on believing. Keep on believing. See, he says here, when you pray, that implies that we would go and pray and, and, and pray and, and ask. Pray. See, when that centurion came to Jesus, it said it came, he came beseeching him. That word beseeching him could have been translated pray. He came praying him or asking of him. See, we come and ask. Um, you know, in, in the book of Hebrews, it says, um, let me read you this. And I'll quit with this. I keep saying in conclusion, in conclusion. <laughs> I don't know, I uh, don't mean to be lying about it, but uh, in conclusion, i got one more, and this is really is in conclusion. Uh, this is Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. I'll quit with this. Here's a little bit of encouragement. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. It says this, Let us therefore come boldly. Now, lest you get the wrong idea, the word translated boldly ju just means with freedom or with liberty. It could be translated freely. It just means with, without uh, restriction, freely. It doesn't mean boisterous or, in, you know, in an arrogant way. Boldly doesn't mean that. It boldly just means free access. It means with liberty, with freedom. Like, like the doors are open, you have free invitation. Let us come freely. I like to say it that way. Unto the throne of grace. Isn't it interesting that he calls God's throne the throne of grace? Isn't that interesting? Not a throne of judgment, but a throne of grace. A, f a throne of... See, think about the, what I told you in the beginning. Grace, the Greek word is charis. It could be translated gift. Throne of God's gifts. <laughs> the source of his gifts. Let us come boldly or freely to the throne of grace. Why? That we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. He says, let us come that we may obtain. That's the thought. We come not that we, we go away empty-handed, but that we may obtain. Jesus said, when you pray, believe you receive. See, it's a throne of grace that he wants you to have. You know, I think, this is my opinion, if we could understand the heart of God, he wants us to have, he wants us to have his blessings more than we want to have it. And it's, it's simple, but it's hard in one respect. Here's what's hard. Can I tell you what's hard? What's hard is everything in the physical realm tries to contradict it. <laughs> I wish it weren't so. But everything, your physical senses try to contradict. See, but, but we're not, 
if our physical sense